for the central bank digital currencies to be implemented, customer assets that are currently held in banks, they have to be tokenized. It's the first step. It's not the ultimate goal. It's a tool to get you to accept this new reality. You may already be familiar with the concept of asset tokenization. I discussed it in my previous videos when Citibank and JP Morgan Chase launched digital token banking service that effectively allows them to convert their customers' assets into digital tokens. It's already happening. I also wrote an entire post on tokenization and the role of the Bank of International Settlements on my Substack. BIS, or the Bank of International Settlements, is the central bank for all central banks, effectively. The infrastructure for the implementation of these new digital products has been put in place by the Bank of International Settlements, or BIS for short. It is an entity that functions as a bank's bank. Its mission is, and I'm quoting from its charter, to support central banks' pursuit of monetary and financial stability through international cooperation and to act as a bank for central banks. Effectively, the BIS is the international central bank, a cross-border global structure, global entity that is governed by appointed officials, not elected by appointed officials, and it's managed to remain in the shadows since its establishment on January the 20th, 1930. The U.S. Federal Reserve is part of the system, so it has been around for almost 100 years. Comment below, let me know if you are familiar with it, if you've heard about it before and its role in international banking. The launch of a digital identity wallet is only the first step. According to the BIS, a central ledger will be created for the world's central bank digital currencies. This is when it gets interesting. For the transition to be successful, financial assets would be tokenized as I briefly mentioned earlier. So the Bank of International Settlements defines tokenization as the process of representing claims digitally on a programmable platform. Let's take it one step further. The BIS makes an attempt to assure us that a token can be seen as the next logical step in digital record keeping and asset transfer. So what is a digital token? A token is a digital asset that can be manipulated by a financial institution. A tokenized customer's deposit is subject to the rules defined by its issuer. For example, a token may be spent or exchanged only within the scope or within the set of rules, a predefined set of rules, I should say. An asset, for example, a customer's bank deposit may have rules that allow the money to be spent only on certain services or certain products. Further, a token stores all information about the underlying asset, so its previous owners, dates of purchase, dates of sale, transaction dates, every single piece of information. This data is stored on a blockchain that is managed by a financial institution. The Bank of International Settlement explains the structure of a token in the following illustration. As you can see, a token consists of the information, such as banking information, your account level data, and the rules that define how this data is to be accessed and by whom. I really want to draw your attention to the fact that tokenization involves a new concept of, quote, a conditional performance of actions. Here's how the bank defines it. It enables the contingent performance of actions through smart contracts, which are logical statements such as if, then, or else. By combining composability and contingency, tokenization makes the conditional performance of actions more readily attainable, even quite complex ones. The so-called conditional performance of actions is most likely used when setting the rules of what an asset can and cannot do. These rules are likely to have the potential to limit your user's ability to use your funds or other types of assets such as tokenized equities, real estate, precious metals, and other types of assets. 
According to the Bank of International Settlements, all assets would be tokenized when the central ledger is launched. So every single asset will be part of the central ledger. Such assets would include deposits, real estate, and even precious metals, gold and silver. Effectively, all items of value would undergo the process of tokenization and would be recorded on a central ledger. A new type of financial market infrastructure, a unified ledger, could capture the full benefits of tokenization by combining central bank money, tokenized deposits, and tokenized assets on a programmable platform. This is according to the Bank of International Settlements Annual Report. What is the ultimate goal here? Well, it is pretty obvious. The ultimate goal of this digital system is to create a unified ledger. This is a new type of financial infrastructure that would contain every bit of information about a person's income, their assets, their holdings, and everything in between.